Greetings to you, everybody. Greetings to you, everybody. Good evening and welcome to our special, special teaching on uh, Hanukkah. I am giving everybody an opportunity to come on into the room. It is 7.59 and the teaching is slated to begin at 8 o'clock. So we do have some time to allow others to join us. As you come on into the room, I want to welcome you this evening. I hope you had a great Shabbat. I hope that uh, for those of you who, um, you know, fellowshiped on today, it was a good time and that you are ready to take on the week. And I see Prophet Kadisha, who is telling me that everything is great. I want to just welcome you. And as you come on into the room, feel free to say hello and to let me know where you're joining me from. If this is the first time that you're joining us on this platform, well, welcome to you. Good evening to you, everybody. Sister Marcy, good evening to you. It is so good to see you. Thank you so much for sharing. And I see Sister Kimon Smith. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Come on into the room. It's going to be an amazing time in the Word of God. And I have a word for the people of God this evening. And I know that um, it's going to be a blessing to you. Um, because it's a blessing to me um, already. So let us just open in prayer. It is eight o'clock and we're going to start and give everybody an opportunity. Sister Johnny, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we're going to give everybody an opportunity to join us. Sister Spencer, good evening to you. Let us pray. Avina Malkin, our Father King, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercies. Your word says that each and every day your mercies are new. We thank you, Lord, that we are recipients of your mercy, of your grace. And Father, as we come, we come as your children, ready to learn, ready to be taught of your spirit, ready to be taught of you. We ask, Lord, that you will just direct our, our, our conversation tonight and this word that you have given me for your people may it go forth with clarity and with power and may it transform lives lord may it shift the people who are under the sound of my voice tonight from one place to the next from one level to the next and father we trust that you are going to do what only you can do by means of your ruach take full control now we pray in yeshua's name amen Amen, amen, amen. Come on into the room, everybody. I'm going to ask you to just like and share this video with your contacts. Go ahead and share this video with your contacts. Be sure to like this video tonight. All right, so for those of you who are joining for the first time, my name is Raquel Jones. I'm an apostle and the founder of Greater Works Apostolic Center. On the broadcast with me tonight, is my sister and my 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 daughter prophet kadisha wilson and tonight we're going to be doing a special teaching on it's it's the teaching is actually called lights miracles and hanukkah lights miracles and hanukkah now a lot of people have been asking what is hanukkah well tonight we're going to find out what that is and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information. Now, tomorrow evening at sunset, that's December 2 at sunset, all the way through to the 10th of December at sunset, the Jewish people and those of us who um, observe and, and teach and practice our faith from a Jewish perspective, greetings to you, Minister Claudia, we will be celebrating Hanukkah. It is a eight day, eight day celebration, and it is a celebration of victory and hope. Victory and hope, that is the theme of this celebration called Hanukkah. And tonight, what I'm gonna do is we're going to be looking a little bit at the history. We're going to be looking a little bit at whether or not Hanukkah is actually biblical. And we're also going to look at it from a future um, perspective. 
And then we're going to be hearing what the word of the Lord is saying to us in this time. Okay, so it's going to be a fulsome discussion. And I pray that those of you who are on the broadcast now will stay with us until the end of the broadcast because it's going to, this, this, this teaching tonight is going to open your eyes to so much. Okay, so let us begin. Let us begin um, by taking a look at the history of Hanukkah. Now, it is not one of the biblical feasts that's mentioned in Leviticus 23. And for those of you who, who were on um, our Bible study on a Tuesday night, remember that we, we, we went way in and deep into Leviticus 23. And you would have noticed that there was no mention of a celebration or a feast called Hanukkah. And that is because Hanukkah did not come around until um, what we call the intertestamental period, which is the period between the Old and the New Testament. And so we would not have read about Hanukkah in the book of Leviticus 23. But what we're going to find is that there are some things that make us realize that God indeed knows the beginning from the end. Because there are some things that if we were to go back and we were to look, we would see some striking, um, some striking things that would really cause us to think. So... Hanukkah is not a biblical feast, okay, that is mentioned in Leviticus 23, but it was developed later by the Jews as a celebration of victory over their enemies and also a story of hope. And it includes miracles. The word Hanukkah is the Hebrew for dedication. And so I'm going to lay the foundation for you, the historical foundation. So in 2 Chronicles uh, 36 23 we read that there arose a king called cyrus who while the jews were in babylon in captivity he um the the the, the babylonian empire was conquered by the media persian empire and there arose a king a, a persian king named cyrus who in 2 Chronicles 36, 23, gave the Jews permission to return to their homeland. He gave them permission to return to their homeland and to rebuild the temple that was destroyed when Nebuchadnezzar entered into their place and took them into exile. And so the Jews went back home and they started the rebuilding process and they rebuilt their temple. Okay, they rebuilt their temple. Now, after the Media Persian Empire, there arose um, a world power, another world power. This time, that world power was Greece. Now, the um, that empire um, was led by a man called Alexander the Great, and Alexander the Great was a very powerful warrior, very powerful leader. And so he, he basically conquered. And one of the things that he did when he conquered an area was he did something that was uh, um, very interesting because what he did was he basically um, implemented a one world government. Are you with me? Kind of like a, a one common government, one common culture, one common language, and all of that. And what Alexander the Great did is called Hellenism or Hellenization. So he basically turned everybody into, into um, um, have everybody following a Greek way of living, okay? And that is called Hellenism. Now, Alexander the Great died. And after he died, his empire was divided into four. Um, four of his generals took over. And one of the generals that took over, right, led an empire called the Seleucid Syrian Empire. And the Judea, or the, or the, or the, or the, the land of the Jews, fell under the power of a man called Antiochus, Antiochus the fourth.
and Antiochus the fourth later took on a title to himself um, he called himself Epiphanes which really means God manifest and so now the Jews are under the power of this tyrant he was a tyrant of a leader okay and his name was Antiochus Epiphanes Antiochus the fourth now part of what Antiochus did was that he enforced what uh, um, Alexander the Great had started in that he enforced uh, um, policies of, of, of assimilation. So he now is enforcing the Greek lifestyle upon the Jews, okay? And he wants everybody to assimilate into this Greek lifestyle. Now, there are some Jews who basically submitted to the greek system okay so the so 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 antiochus wanted um the, the 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 greek lifestyle to permeate religion and the language that is why that is why we have the new testament that is written in greek because the greek language of the time was um was called koine greek which really means common greek so when they when 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 they took over they basically hellenized everybody now some jews submitted to the process of hellenization and they actually started following a greek lifestyle however there was a group of jews who decided that they would never bow to that kind of assimilation that uh, Antiochus was trying to get them to do so um, what did Antiochus do well it, 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 it as a as a true tyrant he was going to ensure that they did what he told them to do or or die and so basically what he did was he issued an ultimatum to those Jews who decided that they were not going to bow. He said to them, listen, you're going to have to stop worshiping on the Sabbath. You will stop keeping your feast days. You will stop circumcising your children. You will stop eating kosher food, which is basically what the Bible says. You will stop doing everything Jewish and you will either bow to a Greek lifestyle or you will die. And so the Jews decided that no, we're not going to bow. And so what did Antiochus do? He marched into Jerusalem. He marched into Jerusalem with his army and he basically desecrated the temple. He went into the temple, he desecrated the holy things, he set up a statue of Zeus, which is a pagan god, in the temple in the holy temple in jerusalem and to make it even worse what did he do he he slaughtered and offered pig on the altar of god right and everybody knows that pigs are a no-no totally unclean totally unkosher and so to him, for him to do that was just the ultimate right and so basically he just desecrated the temple of the lord now there was a man who was living in a nearby village his name was matatius or yeah matatius he was a priest and he had five sons and so what um what a slap in god's face for sure and so what antiochus did was he sent for um, this priest because he wanted him to come and serve in the temple and be his priest and so um, His five sons decided no, that's not going to happen. We're not going to do that as a matter of fact This is gonna be all-out war Because we are no longer going to submit to this kind of atrocity we this is going to be all out war and so led by the by by one of his sons um um he's called yehuda in 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 uh, in uh, hebrew Ju judah in english or judeus they also call him um his greek name led by him there was a revolt it is called the maccabean revolt now you won't read about the maccabean Revol revolt 
in the Bible, but you will read about the Maccabean revolt in other uh, writings because there are other writings, and I'm sure that you've heard about that already, that's not in the Bible. And they're not in the Bible because they're not considered to be um, inspired writings, the Apocrypha. Why are they not in the Bible and why are they not considered to be inspired writings? Because these writings happened at a time when there was no prophetic voice in Israel. So the fact that God was not speaking through a prophet at that time, right, meant that these writings were not inspired and so they're not in our canon, they're not in our Bible. However, you will find a lot of historical information in these writings and it is in these writings that you will find information on the Maccabean revolt. So back to the Maccabean revolt, led by, by, um, by Yehuda, um, Mac he, he, he later became known as Maccabeus or Maccabee, which means hammer. Led by him, this revolt ended up um, chasing the, 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 these people out of the temple, out of Jerusalem, and taking back control of the temple, rededicating the temple unto God rededicating the temple, cleansing the temple of all of the stuff that, that had defiled it and all of the holy things and rededicating the temple unto God. And that is how we have Hanukkah because Hanukkah means dedication. So this is how we have the celebration called Hanukkah. Now, um, a big part of the temple life was the lighting of the menorah. We have read it in our Bible study because God had said that the temple, the, the tabernacle at first and then the temple should always have the light of the menorah. Okay, so at night they, 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 the priests would, would trim the wick and so on and light the menorah and so on to ensure that there was always light in the temple because the light in the temple signified the light of God. Okay. It signified the light of God. And so that is why the menorah was so important. And so Jewish tradition says that after Maccabeus, um, and his, and his, uh, group of, of people cleansed the temple and rededicated the temple. The next step was to relight or to light the menorah. However, it is said that when they were trying to find oil for the menorah, they were only able to find enough oil that would last for one night or one day, okay? So they were only able to find enough oil to last for one night. And so they said, what are we going to do? And they said, okay, we're going to just light it anyhow until we're able to get more um, oil because the menorah as uh, in, is not what a lot of people think it's not candles it's actually um lamps okay it is so 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 the menorah um is it, there is there is oil that is put in there and the wicks are lit and that is how we have lights not candles blessings to you sister b rob i see you all right so 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 they used this one um, one, one night's worth of oil. And the miracle of Hanukkah is that the oil that they found burned for eight long days. It was only one day supply, but it burned for eight long days. Now that is the miracle of Hanukkah. Okay. Now, are you with me? Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So it is coming out of it is coming out of that event, which is a, a time in Israel's history, a point, a time in the Jews, the history of the Jews that this celebration came to being. This celebration is kind of like Purim that we read about in the book of Esther. It is at Purim was also a time when God um, provided a means of escape and 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 and, and so on um, salvation, if you will, saving His people from destruction and 
saving his people from oppression. Hanukkah is one of those things. Now, that is the historical context of Hanukkah. Um, the, the second part of, of our discussion this evening is uh, trying to figure out if Hanukkah is actually biblical. Is it um, something that we, we, we should even be celebrating or we should even be observing or even be talking about as uh, Christians? Um, is this something that we should be talking about? Because really and truly, is it even, even mentioned in the Bible? We know that we don't see the name Hanukkah in the Old Testament because by that time, um, the Old Testament would have been complete. The Tanakh would have been complete. But is Hanukkah even in scripture? Now, here, 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 here is the shocker. The shocker is, it is in the Bible and even more of a shocker to a lot of us as believers is that Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, um, celebrated Hanukkah. And some people will say, oh, he didn't celebrate Hanukkah. But I would like to tell you that indeed he did. If you have your Bibles with you, I would like to invite you to turn with me to the book of John, John chapter 10. And I'm going to be reading it from my... Um, my Oh, Lord, my NIV. OK, so my NIV, John 10, verse 22. And we're going to read all the way to verse 30. It says, then came the feast of dedication. What did we say um, is the is the is the English word for Hanukkah? dedication then came the feast of dedication this is hanukkah right here in john 10 22 at jerusalem it says then came the feast of dedication at jerusalem it was winter and jesus was in the temple area walking in solomon's colony the Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles, what did we say about Hanukkah? It's a time of miracles. The miracles I do in my father's name speak for me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. Let's read a little further down. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I've shown you many great miracles from the father. For which of these do you stone me? And then they go on to say, we're not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Let's stop here for a moment. John says, that it was the feast of dedication, it was Hanukkah, and Yeshua Messiah, it was winter, and Yeshua Messiah was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The thing about it that we don't, we, we tend to, to not remember, a lot of us as believers, is that Jesus was a, 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 a Jew who practiced the religion of the Jewish people and he lived in accordance with the customs and the traditions of his time also where if you were to do some further research you would see that Jesus had a way of um, going to the temple in Jerusalem in Jerusalem for a lot of these feasts and these um, events, why? Because when, when, when you realize what he's doing, 
you will realize why he's showing up at these different feasts and so on. Yes, he's celebrating these feasts, but he's also using the opportunity to authenticate his messiahship. This is the feast of dedication. This is the time where the Jews are celebrating victory over their enemies. And they're also celebrating the miracles, right? The miracle of the lights. Are you with me? They're, 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 they're celebrating the miracle of the light that lasted for eight days instead of lasting for one night. Are you with me? For eight nights instead of lasting for one night. And so... Everybody knows that Hanukkah is a time of miracles and victory and celebration and so on. And Jesus is in the temple and the Jews say to him, are you the Messiah? Tell us plainly, are you the Messiah or not? And this is what he said to them. He said, I tell you, but you do not believe the miracles. It is no, no coincidence that Jesus is making reference to miracles. And he is saying to them, you are here to celebrate the miracles of the lights. You are here to celebrate the miracle that the, the little oil lasted for eight nights. Right. And I am saying to you that I am the miracle of the feast of dedication. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. You, 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 you see what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, the miracles that I do, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And then he goes back down to um, verse 31 again. And he said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the father. Do you realize what Jesus is doing? Jesus is authenticating his message to your spiritual eye. Understand, it is the same thing that Jesus did when they were celebrating um, the um, when they were when they were doing the water libation that is associated with the feast of tabernacles. When Jesus, they're pouring the water on the altar. They're doing the water libation. They're pouring the water on the altar, and it is it it is part of their ritual. And Jesus stands up in the midst of everybody when they're doing that, and he says, "Is anybody thirsty? Let him come to me and drink, and I will give him living waters." And so Jesus is using all of these opportunities to say to them, everything that you do, every ritual, everything that you do, I am the fulfillment. I am the one who is, who, 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 who all of that will be fulfilled in. Are you with me? He, Jesus, is the real light of the world. He, Yeshua Messiah, is the real miracle. Can I get an amen from the people of God on this broadcast tonight? Now, amen, amen. It all points to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Indeed, Minister Claudia. All right. So, 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 amen, amen, amen. Greetings to you. Sister Esther, we're just having a little praise break here before I go, before I, before I move on. Sister Cheryl and Shaw, greetings to you. All right. So, 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 so that's Jesus. So is it, is it, is it something that as believers, we really should um, get involved with, or we really should celebrate, or we really should. I saw a lot of people coming on the, the broadcast tonight, and they're saying, you know, Happy Hanukkah and all of that stuff. In in Hebrew, they say Hanukkah Sameach, which means um, Happy Hanukkah, or they say um, Hag Sameach, which means Happy Holidays, right? So I see a lot of people coming on and saying, you know, Happy Hanukkah. Is that something that we really should be celebrating? or is that something that we really should be observing well we see jesus we see jesus in the temple during that time right we see him we are now his temple indeed we see him in the temple and i want you to know that jesus yeshua messiah would have had to travel to the temple just for that are you with me okay all right so 
So, is there anything about this festival of or feast of dedication that we can learn about the future? So we looked at the historical context. We looked at it in Jesus' time, and we see Jesus very much um, in the temple when they're doing this feast of dedication. Is there anything else that as believers we can learn from Hanukkah? Well, the Bible tells us it is, is it similar to the Feast of Lights? It is actually the same thing, Minister Claudia. It is the Feast of Lights or the fest Festival of Lights is another name for it. Um, um, someone had, uh, had renamed, had not renamed it, but, but, but gave it that name also. Greetings to you, Sister Crystal. So is there anything that we can learn for the future or from this festival which is which is why i said to you at the start of this teaching you know that god is so amazing because although we don't see any mention of the feast of dedication in the hebrew scriptures there are some interesting things that we are going to find out right now even as we talk about the future When we look at the life of Antiochus IV, we need to understand that in the future, there will be one from the line of Antiochus. And when I say the line or the lineage of Antiochus, I don't mean his physical lineage. I mean his spiritual lineage. There is one that will arise that will do the very same thing that Antiochus Epiphanes did. That world domination will be his focus. And if you turn with me to the book of Matthew, we're going to look at Matthew 24. We're going to look at Matthew 24 and Jesus making a statement that's very telling. Matthew 24, Jesus left the temple, the same temple, by the way, the same temple that the Maccabeans cleansed and dedicated, rededicated unto God and all of that is the same temple that Jesus was in that we just read about in the book of John. Are you with me? If Antiochus had his way, right, Jesus, uh, G there, would be, there, there, there would be no temple, no rededicated temple for Yeshua to stand in. Are you with me? So Jesus is having a conversation with his disciples, with the 12, eh? with his, his, um, his disciples. Verse 1 says, Jesus left the temple and was walking away with his disciples. When his disciples came to him, and when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. So Jesus is in the temple. Jesus left the temple. His disciples, they came up to him and they called his attention to the buildings. Maybe they said, Wow, look at the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you see all these things? You see all these things? He said, I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Jesus was talking about what was going to happen. In, 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 we see that happening in 70 AD when the Romans entered in, right? And totally destroyed the second temple jesus told his disciples in matthew 24 that that was going to happen okay now let's go down to verse 3 it says as jesus was sitting on the mount of olives the disciples came to him privately and they said to him tell us they said when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age 
And Jesus answered and said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. And then Jesus goes on and he talks to them. And then in verse 9, he says, You will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many. And I want to now go down to the key text, which is verse 15. Verse 15 said, says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, and then he said, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house let no one in the field go back to get his cloak how dreadful it will be in those days for the pregnant women and the nursing mothers pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the sabbath and then he goes on matthew 24 is a passage of scripture that is highly highly misinterpreted as a matter of fact, Matthew 24 is one of those scriptures that um, a lot of people have not taken the time out to do the proper, the correct exegesis on Matthew 24 to see what exactly and who this passage is addressed to, Matthew chapter 24. But the Bible tells us that Jesus is speak, speaking specifically to his disciples, right? And they're talking about the temple. And Jesus said to them, this temple is going to be destroyed. And Jesus said to them, but when you see standing in the holy place, which is to suggest that before I get to that part, let me, let me, let me back up a bit. In the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, 27, Daniel chapter 11, 31, and Daniel 12, and Daniel 12 1 Daniel spoke of these things right he spoke of these things Daniel is one of those books that a lot of people don't go into because it is a highly um it's apocalyptic and a lot of people really don't understand much about end time prophecies so people kind of stay away from it but the truth is that Daniel prophesied about the rise of Antiochus, right? He prophesied about the rise of Antiochus, but he also prophesied about one who would come just like Antiochus. He prophesied of one who would come and do the very same thing. And as a matter of fact, Jesus right here is quoting Daniel. And I want you to understand that Jesus is quoting Daniel. And Jesus is saying, let the reader understand. What does Jesus mean by let the reader understand? Well, first you need to understand that the entire cost story had already happened before right that Antiochus story had already happened so when Jesus said what you read about in Daniel is going to happen again it is going to happen again one just like Daniel is going to arise and uh, not Daniel sorry one just like Antiochus is going to arise and he's going to do the same thing he's going to go into the temple and he is going to set up an abomination that causes desolation. There is one that is going to come and he is going to set up an abomination that causes desolation in the most holy place. I wonder if you understand that Matthew 24 is speaking specifically to the Jewish people. I wonder if you understand that Matthew 24 is speaking specifically to the Jewish people. That is why Jesus could say to them, this is why Jesus could say, pray 
that your flight doesn't take place in the winter or on the Sabbath. And then he says, when you see this, 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 um, this statue, this, this desolation, this abomination that causes desolation, he says, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Who else is in Judea? Who let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. In other words, when you see this abomination in this temple that is going to be rebuilt, when you see this abomination, know, know that the time is there. The time is, is, is now. The time is now. He says, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. And pray that your flight is not going to be on the Sabbath or in the winter. Because you understand that this is going to be a serious time. What did I say? Remember what I said about Antiochus when he came in and he tried to assimilate the Jews into a Greek way of living? He, <laughs> there is one who will arise again. We call him the anti-Messiah or the Antichrist. He is from the line of Antiochus, Epiphanes. And just as Antiochus tried to get God's people to assimilate into the, this, 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 this worldly lifestyle, this lifestyle of, 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 of flesh and debauchery, it is the same thing that he is going to do. Not only that, remember that Antiochus Epiphanes outlawed the Sabbath. He, he didn't want, he said, you cannot eat kosher anymore. He said, you cannot keep the laws of God anymore. Are you with me, people of God? Are you with me? He tried to get them to cut out everything Jewish. They had to, he wanted them to renounce everything Jewish. So there is a Hanukkah to come, my gosh. Do you see what I'm saying? And just as some Jews yielded to Antiochus and followed his way, but there was a remnant because God never leaves himself without a remnant. Just as there was a group of people, a group of, of people of God who said, we are not bowing to your satanic system. So too, there will be a group, a remnant who will say, we are not bowing, right? And not only that, just as God raised up, right? Judah Maccabeus or Judah Maccabee, the hammer. Did I say Maccabee means hammer? Um, listen, there, there is so much anointing on this teaching right now. Just as God raised up Judah Maccabeus to go and hammer down Antiochus, so too Messiah will come and overthrow and hammer down and utterly destroy the anti-Messiah. Do you, do you see, you see, you see how the word of God is wonderful? Do you see how the word of God is wonderful? Do you see when, for those of you who have been coming the journey with us, when I say that God works in patterns and types, and if we understand patterns and types, it tells us so much about the future. And a lot of, a lot of us as believers, a lot of us as believers, we stay away from these prophetic books, these apocalyptic books. And when I say apocalyptic, it is said that the book of um, Daniel and Revelation are apocalyptic books because they use a lot of imagery. So a lot of, you know, beasts and and all of that stuff. They're not just prophetic books. They're apocalyptic books because of the imagery, right, that they use. So, 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 so back to what I was saying. I was saying that a lot of times as believers, we stay away from prophecy because we read prophecy as if prophecy was written to the Gentile church. 
We read prophecy as if prophecy was written to us. And when we get to certain things and we, 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 we end up in a dead end and we're saying, but hold on a second, this don't make any sense. What we try to do is we try to allegorize it. We try to spiritualize it and say, well, this must mean a spiritual thing or we really don't know what to, to make of it because as far as we're concerned, you know, how does the church fit into this? People of God on this broadcast tonight, we will never understand prophecy if we take out Jews, Israel, and all of those people out of prophecy. Why? Because prophecy, we need to understand that the word of God, the word of God is about these people that God chose to work through to bless all the nations through. So we can't take them out of prophecy and expect prophecy to make sense. Are you with me? We can't take them out of prophecy. And so even in some of these in some of these um, um, celebrations and so on, like Hanukkah and, Hanukkah and, 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 uh, and um, Purim and so on and so forth, we're saying, oh, those things are for the Jews. But let me tell you something. Don't you understand that as Gentiles, Gentile believers, we have been grafted in and we are now members of the household of God. And so if I were adopted by a family, right, everything that that family does is going to have um, 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 an impact on me every decision that that family makes then it's going to have an impact on me because i am adopted into that family i'm part of that family and i have an inheritance with that family so i need to understand what is happening with that family and i need to understand the promises and i need to understand the covenant and i need to understand the the, 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 the um the, the celebrations and i need to understand these feasts because they all point to something greater are you with me? So the whole thing about what we see Antiochus doing to the Jewish people is going to come back around at the end of the age. We read about it and it is called the Antichrist. Remember that the Antichrist, the Bible itself tells us that the spirit of the Antichrist is here. Right? The man of lawlessness has not yet been revealed, but the spirit of the Antichrist has always been here. The spirit of the Antichrist is coming straight from Nimrod, straight from the Babylonian, straight from Babel or Babel, however you pronounce it. Are you with me? And so down the line from Nimrod, we have a whole line of of people who have operated under the antichrist spirit and the antichrist spirit is still alive and active and so everything that we see with antiochus it was it was it, 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 it there, there is another coming of the very same thing that's what jesus meant when he said to his disciples who came and said to him tell us what will be the sign of your coming and so on and so forth and he said when you see First things first, understand that this temple is going to be torn down and all of these different things are going to be happening and there are different, different things. And I want, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you, my brothers and sisters on this broadcast, please go and read the book, read the chapter, Matthew chapter 24, go online, get, read, um, Bible commentaries and so on and so forth and get um get get information on matthew chapter 24 because a lot of people have misinterpreted matthew matthew 24 because they don't understand who jesus was speaking to and why he was speaking to them about this and what we need to understand about this i'm going to encourage you to go read matthew 24 again and go and do some research. Go and read some Bible commentaries. And when you're reading Bible commentaries, also please read from the Jewish perspective. Because what you will find a lot is that um, a lot of times when we read commentaries and so on, they are, they are more focused on 
they're, they're not not a lot of them are coming from the Jewish perspective. So when you go look for uh, Matthew 24, um, the Jewish perspective, commentaries on the Jewish perspective, and you will get a clear understanding of what it is about. So people of God, we have looked at the history of Hanukkah. We have looked at, um, um, we've looked at uh, Jesus in Hanukkah is it biblical is it for us and we have looked at the pattern of Hanukkah the future of Hanukkah and right now I'm going to come to what the Lord is saying to us right now in this time and in this season but before I get to that let me let me let me let me share this with you so now the Jews and others maybe like myself and others of you on this broadcast who follow Yeshua in a Jewish way um observe this 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 eight day celebration how the jews celebrate it is that it's a time of um you know celebration eating feasting they 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 make um what they call potato cakes which is deep fried uh, cakes and you know it's a time when they exchange gifts it's a time when they but the significance of of of, of hanukkah is that each each evening they light uh, um a candle from what is called a hanukia hanukia which is a eight branch menu it's not a menorah i remember one rabbi said please don't call the hanukia a menorah but it's an eight branch stand okay and so they have a, a stand in the middle and uh, um the other um the, the 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 candles a candle is lit each night uh, and uh, they celebrate and they you know they 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 read and and so on and so forth and it's a time of celebration and fellowship and all of that stuff and they do their 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 potato cakes and have a wonderful time and it's eight days okay so that's how they celebrate now let's get to what the lord is saying to us at this time as his people Every time there is a feast day, every time there is a feast, a biblical feast, um, and not even a biblical feast alone, but like this feast of dedication, right? And also Purim. I like to tell people that uh, there is a portal that is open if you were on the Bible study last week, we spoke about these set times and we said that these are appointed times that God comes and meets with man. And this is something that God has been doing from, 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 from all the way back in Egypt, right? For example, when he um, instituted a Passover. And so Passover, we see different things happening around the same time as that date that he gave them in Egypt. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that in some of these feast days, not some of them, all of them, I can guarantee you that there is a portal that is open over us, that heaven is open over us, and that God continues to operate in certain ways, even today amongst his people. As I was preparing to do this teaching, the spirit of the Lord started laying certain things on my heart because now that there is no longer a temple standing in Jerusalem, the word of God tells you, amen, Minister Claudia, Minister Claudia says she has had some supernatural experiences during these times. And if you're new to these teachings, um, you will understand that when there are certain things happening, when there are certain set times and so on, the heavens are open and we see God, um, doing certain things you know it's like uh, this is the image that just came to me a while ago like i just had a flash of jacob's ladder and he said angels were ascending and descending upon the ladder and i want to tell you that the angels were ascending on this ascending and descending on the ladder because i believe that these angels were um the ones the ministers that were going to make sure that the promises were carried out um, the promises of God to Jacob were carried out. But anyway, um, so the Bible tells us that now that there is no longer a temple standing in Jerusalem, we are the temple. 
1 Corinthians 3.16 and 1 Corinthians 6.19 tells us that we're the temple of God and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we carry the light of Messiah. Messiah was the light of the world. As a matter of fact, I want you to know that the menorah in the tabernacle was pointing to the fact that uh, Yeshua is the light of the world. God is the light of the world. Yeshua, his Messiah, is light of the world. And guess what? When we read all the Hebrew prophets, the Hebrew prophet says that Israel is a light to the nations. It's supposed to be a light to the nations. Why? Because they are the ones who should carry Torah, who should carry the law of God, who should carry God to the people. The people of the world are pagan people. They don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about the laws of God. And so Israel was called to be a light to the nations. Now, Jesus, as his disciples, we know that we are light, that we carry the light of Messiah. So since we are the temple and since we carry the light of Messiah, here is what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. There are times when we allow things of the world, things of the world system to dim our light. When we allow things to creep in that cause us to not burn as brightly as we should. When things, um, when we allow uh, things to, to, to take uh, um, a seat on our hearts uh, as opposed to God being on the throne of our hearts or the seats of our hearts, if you understand what, what I'm saying. There are times when we allow ourselves to become, um, you know, a little tainted by, you know, the world system, however that looks or whatever that looks like. Um, and I believe that at this time, God is calling us. God is calling us to a time of consequence creation and rededication of our temples <clears throat> i believe that at this time god is saying i'm calling you to a period of 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 consecration and rededication of your of your temple unto me are you with me and it's not that uh, confirmation indeed woman of God. And it's not that uh, oh, anybody is coming at you or anybody is trying to make you feel bad or anything like that. Because the truth is that all of us have to check our hearts and con constantly check ourselves. Are you with me? We always have to constantly check ourselves and sometimes God have to check us. You understand? So this message is not for you. This message is for us. Because God is speaking to me too. Are you with me? I don't know. He's speaking to my own heart too. My God, there is so much. There is so much power on the word of God tonight. Because the rock of God is just absolutely moving. Right? And so the Lord is saying, allow, consecrate yourselves. Consecrate. We have an eight day window. Hanukkah is eight days. We have an eight day window. And I don't know how the spirit of the Lord will move upon your own heart. Maybe the spirit of the Lord will say, I want you to pull out, pull up, pull, pull, pull away from everything and everyone for a day or two or three days. I don't know. Just spend some time um, in prayer. Just spend some time with me. Just spend some time dealing with some stuff. My God, dealing with some stuff, you know, if, 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 if there are some issues that you're trying to deal with, your prayer life is probably, thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody's prayer life may not be where it's supposed to be. Maybe there, there are issues that you're dealing with, family members, unforgiveness, whatever that looks like. God is saying it is now a time of consecration and rededication of your temple. But he's not done yet because it was not until the temple was cleansed and rededicated that we had the miracles of the light. 
And I believe that God is saying that there are some things that he wants to do. Another word that I hear coming to me as I speak to you is the word victory. That's the word of God that just floated. It's like that word just floated and just landed in my spirit. A victory is, 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 is the word I'm hearing because I, 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 I believe that the spirit of the Lord is saying that after the consecration and the rededication of your temples, then he wants to do some miraculous things in your life. I believe that God is about to, in this eight day window, is about to do some miraculous things in your life. I, I believe that there are people that you've been praying for their salvation. I believe that God is saying that in this time and in this season, I'm going to be moving in this regard. Are you with me? I, 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 I believe that the Lord is calling some people closer to him. I, um, as a matter of fact, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher and so like i said for the during this window miracles i hear also the word revelation i believe that god wants to take uh, there are some of you on this broadcast that and some of you are crying you're you're crying even now as you are listening to the sound of my voice i hear revelation god is saying i want to give you revelation there are things that i want to reveal to you there are things that i want to show you i hear the spirit of the lord saying there are things that i want to show you I hear the spirit of the Lord saying relationships will be mended. I hear the Lord saying relationships will be mended. I don't know what 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 is happening even in some of your fa in your family situation, but I hear the spirit of the Lord saying relationships will be mended and I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that it is a, a time for miracles to flow in your life. And so people of God, Minister Claudia, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that he is going to be speaking with you also. I don't know if you're still on this broadcast, but if you are still on this broadcast, Minister Claudia, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that he's going to be speaking to you as well he's going to be speaking to you specifically wow Woo. praise the lord and so people of God, that's what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us tonight. That's what the Lord is saying to his people. And I am just in awe of how God moves. Can somebody just praise him? Just, just, just type something on your screen. Just whether you want to say hallelujah, whether you want to, you don't even have to type it on the screen. If you want to shout it exactly where you are. And I see so many people typing about confirmation because that's also another thing with God. You know, he always confirms his word. He always confirms his word. So when someone comes with a word, it is something that must bear witness with your spirit. It must bear witness with your spirit. Are you with me? I see Sister Maureen um, shared earlier that she was just coming on. She came on a little late. Sister Maureen, I want to encourage you to go and to um, catch this broadcast, re, um, the rebroadcast, or just watch it again. And um, because I believe that you really will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And so people of God, that's the word of the Lord to us in this time. Um, Hanukkah starts tomorrow evening at sunset and it goes until 
the 10th of December at sunset. And I pray that your time with the Lord will be a time of refreshing and a time where he will just take you to. I look forward to the, to the reports, to the praise reports. I look forward to the testimonies. I look forward to the Lord speaking to you in your night visions. No, no, my sister, not this year, but in the will of the Lord, we are believing God that next year is going to be an amazingly different year as it relates to our celebration of our feast days and, and all of that stuff. But we will definitely keep you posted. And so people of God, I am just, you know, you know, when you, you know that, okay, you, 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 the teaching is finished, but there is just such a, a presence. The Spirit of the Lord, or bless the Lord, oh my soul, amen, amen. The Spirit, the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord, the anointing is so strong, amen. The anointing is so strong in this atmosphere that you know the teaching finished, you know, but you just want to bask in. The, the, the awesomeness of the presence of God. The word of God is amazing. How God works is amazing. And there is so much that we, 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 we have missed. But thank God that in this time and in this season, he is opening our eyes to see. He is opening our eyes to see. He is opening our eyes to see. The Apostle Paul had an experience on the road to Damascus. And um, the Bible tells us that uh, after a couple of days, the scales fell off of his eyes because when he had that encounter, he lost his sight. And then uh, after the disciple went and prayed for him, the scales fell off of his eyes. But I want you to understand that the scales that fell off the apostle Paul's eyes were not just a physical um, um, renewing of his sight, but the scales also represented a spiritual blindness that left him. And so in this time, there are people who God is allowing scales to fall off their eyes and spiritual blindness is leaving and revelation and clarity is coming and people are going to do new realms in the word of God, understanding the word of God like we've never understood it before. And so I just want to bless you, people of God. Thank you so much for being on this broadcast tonight. And I just want to pray for you and release you right now. So let us pray. Abba, Father, you're awesome. Your word is awesome. And we thank you for this precious time that we spent in your word tonight. We thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh who teaches us all truth. And we thank you for Yeshua, our Messiah, through whom we have access. We thank you that we stand tonight not as illegitimate children, but as sons. We thank you for your kindness and we thank you for your word and we thank you, Lord, for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson tonight, Lord, a message of victory over the enemies of your people. We thank you for the hope that we have. And we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that we have a work to do. And that word work is to be light in the earth realm and to be salt. I thank you, Lord, for the prophetic word that has been released tonight and I cover the word with the blood of Jesus and I declare that the enemy cannot touch it. I declare Lord that every person who received your word tonight will have an encounter with you. They will have a new experience with you and Lord even as they take this word and as they go off into a time of consecration and rededication of our temples to you god that lord you will you will you will reveal yourself in even greater ways god lord i speak for miracles in the lives of your people
Lord, you know each and every heart on this broadcast tonight. You know, Lord, hearts that are broken. You know, Lord, hearts that need you. You know hearts that are crying out to you. You know the desires of the hearts. And I pray, God, in the name of Yeshua Messiah, that you will visit every heart tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will give each and every person a testimony. And Lord, even the fact that they made the time to come and to be taught of your spirit tonight, I pray that you will reward their faithfulness, God. Father, I pray a covering over them and their household. Lord, I declare that there is no lack in their lives, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you will pour water upon dry places that lord you will fill them up to overflowing god and lord even as they leave this broadcast tonight lord that living waters will flow from them into the lives of other people that they come in contact with i speak a covering over them oh god in the name of yeshua messiah and i thank you for the angels of the lord that always encamp around about your people and so lord even now as i release them I declare over them and I say, may Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May Adonai lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beshem Yeshua Hamashiach. Sar Shalom, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom to you, everybody. Have a good night. Bless you.